360 Strong Women. Today we're going to do a strength training workout using two muscle groups. We're going to be working our pectorials and we're going to be working our upper back muscles, our big butterfly muscles, our latissimus dorsi, our traps, our rhomboids, and working primary and secondary movers using different planes of motion. And I'm going to use a couple different sets of weights and a band for this. Go ahead and get the equipment that you need. Make sure that it's heavy enough that you're feeling fatigued at the end of the set, but not so heavy that you're losing form. Form over everything else. If you're just learning chest and back exercises, please, please go very light or don't use any at all. Just learn the alignment and the movements. Um, yes, a lot of these exercises are going to push into your shoulders because your shoulders connect your pectorials and your back muscles. So it's kind of all related, be a secondary mover for a shoulder, uh, but you will fi feel fatigued in your shoulders. You also may feel fatigued in your wrist flexors and extensors. So what do I always say? Let's keep moving them and putting oxygen into them. You're going to need some water. We're going to get started. So I want to warm up your body. When I warm up your body, what I'm trying to do is move your body because we want to move every day at least 20 minutes. And I want to get that vascular system open up. So even though we're warming our whole body up, we're not necessarily working those muscle groups today, you're going to want that oxygenated blood going through your body. My arms up over my head because I want my metabolic system to start churning up. I'm going to twist things out. I want to rinse it out. It puts these gentle movements, rhythmic movements back into my body. And then I want to ignite and engage my gluteals, my big leg muscles by opening up and then loading them down. Nothing like burning calories because I'm warming up those big muscles. Now we're working upper body today, not necessarily lower body today, but I want the oxygen coming through my body. I'm going to be moving my body. I'm going to be burning my calories. Just put these movements in. And then what I, what I want to do then is start to mimic some of the things I might be doing, like rows or flies, maybe a lat press, maybe a V press, maybe a chest press. Open those pectorials up. Do a side body. Open up those big muscles in the back. Maybe I need to come up, down, forward, put extension in the back, and then open up my pecs. Up, down, forward, and back. And be rhythmic with that. And again, shoulders are going to be involved. Secondary movers. Open up everything, get it nice and warm. Three to five minutes of rhythmic movement is what you need. You need eight, eight ounces of water through the day. Stay hydrated. And when you're working out, you want to make sure you've got water nearby, but you don't want to just gulp it all down because it'll sit in your stomach and sometimes it doesn't feel any good, especially when you're lifting or you're in a prone position. So you're just going to want to sip it and then keep sipping it. About every 10 minutes, take in some water so that you are staying hydrated throughout the work. As your body's starting to sweat and you're starting to lose salt, you want to replenish your water, your hydrating, keep hydrating your body. All right, start with um, standing rows. And I'm going to do standing rows with weights, dumbbells, and then we're gonna do seated rows with bands. So pick weights that are appropriate for you. 
you're going to split your stance because I'm not there to spot you. So I want to keep your, what, your low back safe. And I don't want you jerking your back. You're just using your upper back muscles, right? So we're just rowing. Palms in to start, apple under the chin, head above your heart, neck in a neutral position. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to hip hinge a little bit because I want to have this open for my hips. I want to have room for my hips. So I'm going to hip hinge, palms in, and row. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale. Five more. Four. Three. Two. And one. Beautiful. Now you could do single, single, single. Or you could do single, single, and then double. I like that one too. All right, we're moving around those muscles. So I'm staying in my split stance, apple under the chin, and I'm going to be palms up and I'm in a row. And again, you could do single singles or single, single doubles. You could do that. Exhale, inhale. One more. Nice. Now, if you need to take a break in between, just let those weights pull you side to side. It feels good in the arms, in the upper back, in the obliques. You're actually working those obliques there. Just give yourself a little bit of a break. So we went palms in, palms up. Now we're going to be palms down. So rolling those shoulders back. And again, you can do single, single doubles. And here we go. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale. Notice that I'm not throwing my back. Pinning my shoulder blades back together. Beautiful. So I'm going to squat down and put my weights down. So you're going to pick up your band and meet me down here on my mat. We're going to continue rows. So consider this palm in, palm up, palm down. Another set, but we're going to use our bands this time. And you can use any kind of band you want. Now, I'm using my therapy band today because it's the one that I have up here. I'm going to put the band behind my arch of my foot and be on my sits bones. Sit up really nice and tall, pull the pit of the belly in and up, roll my shoulders back, apple under the chin. You know, sit up really nice and tall, not leaning back here or dumping our shoulders. Right? Form. Now, if you have a regular resistance band, like I use those braided ones, I love them you may want to consider putting it on a different way. So you would take your band and put the top of it on the top of your foot and then loop it around so then your handles come here and you're looped in so that that band won't slide out when you start to row. It's locked in. That's just a safety way to do it. So the top of the band goes to the top of the feet. You bring one side around, pull the handle, bring the other side around, pull the handle, You've got this little loop around your foot. It's nice and safe. My resistance band's sticky. It's not going anywhere. So I'm going to just put it behind the arch of my feet. Now, I want my legs rolled in towards each other so they're not hanging out. I'm not externally rotated. Hip flexor follows knee, follows ankle. My toes are dorsiflexed towards my knees. My knees are in a nice, soft joint so that they're not locked out. I've got oxygen coming in. 
they're not bent either, right? So I'm stretching my hamstrings while I'm doing this. Then I want to find my resistance for me, pull my elbows to my rib cage, and I want them hanging out back here. That's out of contraction. I want to pull them up here, and I want to find resistance that works for me. And I'm going to glide my elbows, palms in, back and forth. So my elbows are coming towards my rib cage and just gliding by them. So it's an exhale and an inhale. Sit up nice and tall. One more. Perfect. Then I'm going to bring palms up. Continue. Sitting tall. One more, and then palms down. Continue, pinching those shoulder blades back together. Exhale here, inhale. Two more, and last one, best one. Perfect, so we got a lot of rows in. That takes care of some upper back work. I'm going to work chest, so our back muscles become a secondary mover and our pectorials become the primary mover, where when I was doing rows, our pectorials were the secondary mover and our back muscles were the primary mover. All right, so I want to do um, one, one weight. Make it heavy. Heavy as you can go and still keep your form. I'm gonna lay all the way down. Weights out of the way. And I wanna do an overhead chest press pectorials. As I come up, I'm going to sit up and do a lat press. Bring it down to a front lateral raise and row it in. Lay all the way down. Come over. Tap for the chest. Come up for the lat. There's a little shoulder work there. And then traps. Lay down. Coming back. Sitting up, abs. So it's just a little multitasking here, but still getting in a lot of chest and back work. Tapping over as far and slow as you can. Lifting up, doing that press, getting in that row, bringing it back. Over, lift up, bring it out, <clears throat> row it in. And come back. Hey, Jax. Come over the top. Sit up. Exhale. Inhale. Row it out. And sit back down. One more time. Overhead. Sit up. Press. You can do that front lateral raise. Or you can bring it down like I did the last one. And then bring it down. Tap over and you're done with that little um, sequence. I like sequence moving because our body moves in different planes of motion and we use multiple uh, muscle groups at a time. So it's more functional that way. 
when we sit up and then we reach for something, we reach behind us, that would be that kind of movement. We need to be able to sequence movements in, keep that form going, and you're still working muscle groups, but it's just a way of doing one, multitasking, so you can shorten up your workout, but two, being very functional in the way you move. We move, it's like harmony in motion. We move like that throughout the day. We're not just like, okay, I need to pick something up. So what do I need to do? I can't bend over, that's gonna hurt my back. So first I have to do a squat and then I have to lift, right? With my upper back muscles, my arm muscles and left, pull it tight to my body and stand up. We don't break things down like that. We just squat down, pick it up. And sometimes we put it over, right? Sometimes we laterally push it out. We grab for things, caddy corner. We reach over our head for things and pull it around. So we need to be able to move functionally like that. And that's why I add these sequences in there just to help your body learn how to sequence movements in, keep good form, work your body, but not have to be so choppy in the breakdown. All right, so we want to get into some chest. We're going to do a chest press and um, chest fly. Again, I'm gonna be in a supine position. Now what's important about this is, if you have a low back issue, if you have a low back issue, your legs are gonna be here. They're not gonna be crossed over. Now I, that takes my hips in a weird place. So I wanna keep them in a neutral position. So hip follows knee, follows ankle. They're gonna hang out there. If you don't have a low back issue, your legs can be here. We're gonna start with our weights horizontally. So they're horizontal this way, above your chest. They're not hyper extended out here. See this all the time. Move them towards your chest. Now, if you wanted to work abs at the same time, you can lift up to a bridge and be here. I'm gonna come down, hover. I'm not touching all the way down. I'm not allowing my arms to just hang out on the floor. They're hovering, and then I'm gonna push them up. So it's inhale and an exhale. Inhale and an exhale. Inhale, exhale. One more and then you can come down you can rest your weights on top of you I wouldn't hang them off to the side because then it's awkward to pick them back up again um, and then if you are in bridge you can put your low back back into the ground if your legs were up here you can rest them on the ground now we're going to go vertical so when I brought my weights from this horizontal position and brought them to my chest I turn them in so now they're vertical. I'm going to do the same thing. Soft flies, do soft chest flies, right? Softness in the arms. So bend elbow, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And then you can bring everything down. And then I'm very gently going to sit up and place my weights on the ground. We're going to pick up our band and then we're going to go ahead and stand up. You can get some water right now. I stance, I'm using my band 
And the wider my band is in between my hands, the less resistance I'm gonna have. The smaller it is between my hands, the more resistance I'm gonna have. So that's how you change the amount of resistance. So I'm gonna split the stance, roll my shoulders back, apple one in the chin, start my belly button. And then pulse, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna come right up here, not hyperextending over my shoulders. I'm gonna be right up here. So when I look up, I can see my band. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You feel your pecs pull apart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Are you gonna feel this in the shoulder? Yes, it's a secondary mover. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Again, one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Again, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. One more. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. All right. I'm going to squat down, pick up my weights. So going back between my pectorials and my upper back, we did all those rows. So we want to do flies and we want to do lat press also. I'm going to do my flies by having my palms face in. And then I'm going to make my chicken wings. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale. Notice I'm not throwing my back. Nice and smooth. Exhale, inhale. Then you're going to go ahead and pick up your band. And what I'm going to do with your band is a lat press and a V press. Normally we do this with dumb, dumbbells, and you can do that with dumbbells. I want to check your right and left sides. So I'm going to find the resistance that works for me. Put the band under the arch of my foot so that it doesn't slide out. Now I'm going to bring my elbow tight into my body, like my elbows facing my belly button, right? And then I'm gonna lift up so that my arm's not here, I'm in shoulders here. I'm gonna keep it here and bring it down. Now one way you can do that to make sure that you're in alignment is to put your other arm under your elbow. That's why we're doing right left sides. And you can do these with dumbbells as well, just to make sure you're not coming out of contraction. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale. When my elbow taps my hand, I'm pushing again. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale. Perfect. Now, I'm going to show you how to do that with a dumbbell as well. You would do the same thing. Push it up, exhale, bring it down, inhale. So your elbow's not here. It's not this, right? That pushes into my deltoid as a primary mover. I want to keep it in my back muscles as a primary mover. Is my shoulder moving? Yes, but it's secondary if you keep your elbow here. Keep it tight here, make your back muscles move instead of throwing it out into your shoulder. So that's how you would do it with a dumbbell if you're checking. And what are we checking right left sides? Because we're not biomechanically balanced on both sides, you're checking 
Am I overcompensating on one side? Am I losing form on one side? It's just a way to be self-aware of your right side and your left side and your movers. What side is dominant? What side has more range of motion? What side feels tight, like it's always tired, right? You may have that. And then you're just aware of it and so that you can reformulate how you do your workouts to balance that out a little bit more. It won't be perfectly balanced, but it's a good way to check. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Look at my elbow. It's tight to my body. I'm not throwing it out here. Exhale, inhale. Got my split stance. I'm protecting my low back. Exhale, inhale. I'm not throwing my back to lift this up. I'm not using my low back. Exhale, inhale. I'm using my upper back muscles. Everything can't land in that lower lumbar. You should be surprised how much we use our lower back and our shoulders to do all of our movements. Not necessary. You know, they want to help, but not necessary. Exhale, inhale. Two more. Exhale, inhale. Last one, best one. Exhale and inhale. Nice. Okay, we need to get into our V press. I'm going to do um, a swim with you, and then we're going to call it a day. I don't want to make it too long. There are a lot of chest and back exercises that you can do. This is just one combination that you can do. And we have other chest and back videos. So hit our button, like, subscribe, and share, and you can get all of those workouts. And I've mixed things up. I don't always do a front, what we would call a prone and a supine muscle group together because it really gets fatigued what i like to do is like i might do back and maybe quads and chest and hamstrings kind of mix it up that way so you're not so sore at the top this one's going to make your body feel a little fatigued you want to stretch you want to drink a lot of water get those eight eight ounces of water in so you're not feeling so tight at the top and then we're going to make our beat press exhale right to those victory V's, inhale, bring it back tight to your body, exhale, inhale, Two more, last one, best one, and done. All right, so I'm gonna move these weights out of the way. I'm gonna bring my mat a little closer and bring you down to the ground. Okay, welcome back down to the mat again. Got two more things to do and then I'm gonna stretch you out. So I'm gonna lay all the way down onto my belly. Now, if you have a low back issue, I want you to take your toe, dorsiflex it, tap your toe into the ground, keep it there. Keep your hip flexor in alignment with your knee, in alignment with your ankle. So straight out here, not opened wide up here. If you don't have a back issue, you're gonna lift your legs um, for a little bit more. Now that was gonna work into the low back area. Strong back, strong abs, strong abs, strong back. If that's not for you, keep it on the ground. I'm gonna take my arms out like this. Elbows out wide. Lower down. As I begin to push my arms out, swim them out. Lift it up. Swim it down. Lift it up. Pins those shoulder blades together. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Getting both chest and back. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. One more time. 
exhale, and inhale. You may need to then slide back to a child's pose and stretch it out a little bit. And I feel lengthening all the way through your back muscles. Breathe in and out. Then I want to get into your rhomboids. I want to do it two different ways. But if you are good at push-ups, you can just add this little pump to your push-up and work your rhomboids a little harder. So it would look like this. I do a push-up. I get to the top. And then I push. Now I'm not throwing my butt in the air, pushing the top of my back. That's one way to do your rhomboid. The second way we're going to do it is standing up. So the first way, I'm not going to have you do a push-up. Now, if you're good at push-ups, push up when you get to the top, give it a little pump like you're doing, right, cat. So you're pushing your rhomboid to the top. It's right between your shoulder blades, the little muscle, your posture muscle. It's going to keep you from growing a big hump when you get older. Or you can hold plank and push. Then level out, push. And level out, push. And level out, push. And level out, push. And level out, one more push. And level out. And then meet me standing up. And we've done pectorials, we've done lats, we've done traps, and we've gotten those rhomboids, right, by doing that little push up to pump or plank to pump. The other way you could do a rhomboid is a shrug. I'm going to squat down, pick up my heavy weights, split my stance, roll my shoulders back, and then I'm going to shrug up and down. It's like I want to make my shoulders earrings. Bring them all the way up to your ears and then push it down, up and down. You're making that muscle move up and down. It's like little reps for your rhomboids. Up and down. Can cat cows work? Yeah. Cat cows are meant to like really get it stretched out, but yeah, you can work those rhomboid muscles by doing those little extra pumps out of your cat if you wanted to. I feel more in a push-up pump than I do in a shrug. And so that's why I wanted to show you both ways. And then I'm going to put my weights down, take a big breath up, exhale it down, and I'm going to stretch you out. So we did um, a bunch of pectorials and a bunch of upper back back and chest workout. It's done. You can use dumbbells. You can use bands like I showed you. There's a lot of stuff that you can do. If you're just learning, just use your body weight. Get used to the mechanics of where do I put my elbow? Where do I breathe? That's so important. Things like that. So I'm just going to come up and over just to start to stretch everything out. Because that's going to stretch out my tricep mostly, but Again, secondary parts, and then I want to get into my shoulder, but I want to stay away from my elbow. So I'm just coming across, and this one's going to feel good too. Opening it up. Just working around that shoulder girdle a little bit to stretch where you've done a lot of work because it's all connected, right? It's all connected. And I'm lifting my chest up when I do this one. Throwing it out so it opens it up. And then you can open your chest. So let's sit open for a little bit. Rock into your feet while you're waiting and breathing. Then you can give yourself a hug and round out your back. And then I like 
up, down, forward, and back. Open it up. Up, down, forward, and back. Again, up, down, forward, and back. So I'm doing little standing cat cows, getting a little last shrug in there. Forward, meaning putting extension into the spine, pushing my back away, and then opening up that chest. Lifting to the top side body, stretching all of my side body, opening up my rib cage, and stretching those big lat muscles. Big, 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 big. You can take your arms wide, and you can take them up, and then stretch this up in a little bit. Now, I think it's important then to twist it open. Gonna feel that rinse in your spine, but also in your back muscles. Rinse it open. Beautiful. And then maybe roll it down, apple under the chin. Roll it all the way back up. Roll your shoulders, elbows, and take that big breath up. Exhale that away, and then go in peace. A little bit of chest and back done for you using some dumbbells and a band. And don't forget, you can mix and match these. This one, you may feel a little bit more fatigued because I did this front and this whole front and back thing. You're going to feel your shoulders. Yes, they're connected. So secondary movers, a lot of secondary movers in that workout. And it's different from just working like an upper body and then a lower body where it's a little disconnected. This was like a fusion of upper body stuff. So you may feel a little bit more fatigued from that and that's okay. Make sure that you're using the appropriate weight. Keep working up to it. If you have questions, leave me questions below and I'll get back to you on that. Please keep your comments nice and kind. We appreciate our viewers, we appreciate you. We want to make sure that you're moving in appropriate alignment so that you always stay safe and keep moving forward. That is the goal so that you can move every day at least 20 minutes. Be varied. Have variety. That's why we have the playlist so that you can pick and choose and you never get the same workout. That's great because that's going to propel your body to move forward. Hey, I don't know that one. I'm not acclimated to it. Keep moving forward. And then give yourself some space and grace on what your day looks like. So you may do a longer workout one day. You may have to do a shorter workout. You may have to do a little tiny one and then break a few tiny ones up through the day. And that's okay too. Don't forget to hit our button, like, subscribe, and share. And we will see you for the next video. Bye.